This is the all new Range Rover for 2022. This particular car here is the bells and whistles, kitchen sink, whatever you want to call it. It's the top grade model. It's the first edition, which means with the paint and everything else that we're about to show you on this car, it's a 138,000 pound machine. That's a lot of money for a car, but my goodness, does this thing come packed with a lot of kit and a lot of technology. This particular car, the D350 model, which means it's got the diesel mild hybrid engine with 350 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque. So I guess you could say this is the most Range Rover of the Range Rovers, really. I mean, it's got 23 inch wheels, which don't even look that massive on it. All wheel steering, air suspension. It's got soft closed doors. Lovely. And this one, 7,000 pound satin paint job makes it look all the more glamorous, I think. It's still very much a Range Rover, but the back end of this car has changed quite dramatically from the previous one. Still no mistaking what this car is or who this car is for, because everything is electric. And if you start lifting these flaps here, you have yourself a bench or a picnic bench. It comes with cup holders on either side here and you've got lights above you and you've got a Meridian sound system up there. So you could sit here with your champagne and sandwiches and watch the horse racing or whatever you want to watch. And also, if you prefer putting things in your boot and not people, you have got more storage room. Firstly, it's massive in here and you've got loads of extra storage space down there where there would be a spare wheel in other models. But in this one, you get a tire repair kit and loads of extra room down here. Not that you would need much more room than is offered in here already. And of course, all of this stuff is electric. So easy to use. Oh, and you get a divider as well. This one here, there you go. That means you can separate your boot into two halves. You can put the shopping here and have whatever else you want to put in there. Or you can hook items in here. I guess this is probably wine bottles and champagne bottles maybe. So that's pretty nifty, that stuff. And of course, if you wanted to just open the top half of the boot so the stuff in here doesn't roll out, just like older Range Rovers, you've got this two-part tailgate. That is fancy. Nice, but of course, what matters most in this Range Rover is what's inside and what it's like to drive. It is packed with technology in here. You'll probably have noticed the screens, which in this particular first edition model, they come as standard in this car. There are options on other models and they come with a set of headphones as well. So you can listen to whatever you're playing or whatever film you're watching. It comes with Wi-Fi connectivity or it can be plugged into an HDMI port if you'd rather have your laptop plugged in, for example, to watch DVDs or stream Netflix. This thing here, this quite slow but totally automatic armrest down here has more technology inside it. There's a screen here where you can control your climate control. You can actually do it manually down here as well, but if you prefer buttons on a screen, you can press and control the climate control here. You can even adjust the air quality, whether it's purified or ionized. And there's a cup holder or two cup holders which are hidden under this extended part here, which is quite comically slow, but you don't have to do anything. You just press buttons and slide that bit around there. What else can you do in this? My God, there's no games. You can change the lighting in the back as well, and you can change the colors as well. But you won't be able to see that in this light today. And you can also adjust the blinds above me as well. So I can start to close the roof above me from here as well. There's so much tech in the back of this thing. To close this, it's electronic. It will expose down here a three pin plug. And then there are also two USB-C ports down here as well. Oh, and I've just found there's a 12 volt adapter. You can have all the tech in here, the tech that's embedded into it, and then you can bring a load more as well. So you're not short of technology. And obviously you get your vents up here as well as the vents down there. So you can be cooked or cooled as you please. Blimey, and that's just in the back. Up at the business end of this Range Rover, well, there's tons and tons more tech, starting with the digital infotainment screens that you get here. Now, these systems are not brand new with this car. They've been on other Jaguar and Land Rover products, starting with the Jaguar XE, if I remember correctly. But they're really, really good. This curved infotainment screen here is so nice to use. There's haptic feedback. It's really reactive. It looks, I think, better than any other infotainment system out there at the moment. And it's just so simple and so easy to navigate around the menus. 
Then you've got the digital instrument cluster ahead of you, which is crystal clear. It just looks really nice. And because it's not got a surround to the glass, it looks really high end and premium. In fact, it's the same in the mirror above here. There's no surround, so everything feels really clean cut and nicely done. Then you've got your touch sensitive buttons on the steering wheel. The steering wheel is classic Range Rover. It's quite big, quite butch. I like that. Then you've got more conventional bits down here, cup holders in here, USB-C port. You've got your gear selector, obviously. More cup holders here. And most interestingly, you've got a cool box down here with two modes of cooling. So you can have it cold or really cold, which is very handy, especially if you want to keep your drinks cold and you're going to drive down to the south of France. It's just such a lovely place to be. The whole ambiance and the whole character of a Range Rover, they've been the same for many years now, but what they've done with this car, managing to carry all this technology into a model, and it still feels so authentically Range Rover. So impressive. Bodes well for how it will drive but we'll find out when I'm actually doing the driving. So yeah, should we crack on? Before we hit the road, I just wanted to draw your attention to the number of Land Rovers we have on Cinch. Whether you prefer drop-top Evokes, rugged Defenders, or the poshest of Range Rovers, each car can be delivered to your door in as little as three days. Lovely. All right, so we thought it'd be appropriate to start this review off-road or on the grass, which is pretty much as far as anyone's gonna take one of these Range Rovers. These things obviously have got enormous amounts of off-road technology aboard them and air suspension which can lift you quite high so you can wade through quite deep water but we don't have any of that stuff around here in this part of Chichester so we thought let's just drive onto a bit of bumpy grass just to see how it goes and actually it's very comfortable very soft very Range Rover obviously it's actually very bumpy along this route here so no one's coming let's go at it with a bit of pace easy a sports car would have scraped its belly on that. Even a somewhat performance BMW probably would have needed to tip it over it, but not a Range Rover. And now we've got the rain as well, but you just feel so insulated in this car. Part of that is actually down to the fact that it's got some noise cancelling technology and you've got sound coming out of your headrest. So the noise you hear from outside, the road noise coming from the 23 inch wheels aboard this Range Rover in first edition spec. We don't hear much of it, and it just sounds really very refined. It's a massive car, this thing, 2.5 tons. You feel so on top of the car and so, so in command, and you're almost on a throne. You just feel like you can see everything you need to see. So even though you are in an enormous machine, it is quite easy to drive. I think that's why they're so popular with people of all shapes and sizes. God, it's lovely. I could do hundreds of miles in this thing. You do feel a little bit like you're, you're flying in a lightweight plane through very soft cloud. But then when you do go through a bend, it doesn't suddenly wallow and lean over to the side. The suspension tenses up. It's clever stuff, this air suspension technology. Nothing new. The technology gets better by generation. And this diesel engine, I mean, diesels still are pretty big at this end for obvious reasons because of the fuel economy. Of course, you can get mild hybrids in petrol with this. You can get a full plug-in hybrid as well. The only model actually in this new Range Rover that isn't hybrid is the big, most powerful V8 one. That's the one you go for if you just think, I'm just gonna go for noise and power. But for everyone else, it's mild hybrid or plug-in hybrid, which makes perfect sense. This day and age, that's what you want. And then a car as big as this, to see over 30 to the gallon, 35 miles per gallon claimed in a car as enormous and heavy as this. For the diesel model, that's pretty good going. And it means it won't cost ridiculous amounts of money given its scale to fuel up and my god does it settle down nicely we're only on a cruise through here but i can't hear the engine it's a very silky six cylinder diesel sound that you can hear in the background if you do put your foot down but otherwise it's just silent in the background just slipping through gears so smooth everything about it is so relaxing if i've got a complaint if there's a slight hesitation in kick down but i mean there's barely a time when you're going to suddenly demand full throttle acceleration from this car. I thought with the mild hybrid tech, it might give you a shove at the backside and then the engine would pick up. But it still feels a lot more like a traditional turbocharged diesel engine, which is say that the mild hybrid tech clearly adds power and clearly adds efficiency, but it doesn't inject you with some kind of mystical torque that just appears at the first graze of the accelerator pedal. Now I wanted to show you how effective this thing is at getting off the line. It's so greasy and so slippery here, but if I put my foot down, not even a hint of slip. Amazing traction, 
and so much torque, 700 newton meters of torque. That's why it's so effortless. It's all of that muscle from low down. That's why it doesn't have to rev at all. And that's why it can just trundle through its gears. And obviously if you go off road, all of that torque is going to be especially useful. You've got so many different modes that you can go. You can raise or lower the suspension. That can help when going through water. If you come across a flood on a country route, for example, you can lift the car up just to make sure you get through nice and comfortably. And also when you go off road, you just want it to be higher because it gives you that extra amount of travel and ground clearance. Oh, and you do also get all wheel steering, which means if you come across a slightly tighter corner, this thing turns really, really effectively. Oh, and if you come across a height restriction here, which we're gonna fit under easily anyway, but just to demonstrate how simple it is to lower the car, you just click a button on the infotainment screen and now we're a bit lower. So now we're at access road height, which my goodness, that was actually quite close. Thank God I did that. But now we can also demonstrate the 3D cameras as well down here on the screen. The Defender was the first to get some of the top level of this tech and now it's been integrated across Land Rover's range up. It's really, really good. And the interesting thing, and it's something that's quite cool actually, and we didn't notice it when we were filming our earlier segment, was that you can raise and lower the back of the car with a button. So if you wanted to load something into the boot, or for example, if your dog doesn't want to jump into the boot at normal height, but it will do at the lower height, at the press of a button, the car will just lower. And then that means hopefully your dog will jump in. 138 grand for this car here with all of its options. Yeah, that is a lot of money, but it's got a lot of tech and a lot of luxury aboard it. This is a five seat car. You can get the seven seat as well if you wanted to put people in the back. And of course, this is a first edition model, which means it costs a bit more because it's one of the earlier fully spec cars. So yeah, if I had the cash, an all new Range Rover, it's gonna be a very tempting proposition. It's so lovely. I haven't really got a bad thing to say about this car other than the fact it would never fit in the parking space outside my flat and I've got no chance of ever being able to afford one. But other than that, I love it. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, click that like button please. And of course, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done already because we have a load of videos in the pipeline. Do let us know if you'd like us to drive any cars that we haven't already done so. We've got Rockingham Raceway. We can do our testing there and we're very happy to go out on the road and test cars as well. So let us know in the comments below which cars would you like us to see out on the road or on track for us to do a review. See you soon.